Taco Bell or Chipotle? Chipotle. Taco Bell. Chipotle. Okay, this was a really bad choice because there's <laughs> only two people to vote. So I vote for Taco Bell. No. Yes. One, two, three, four. Welcome to Cog Talk, a podcast brought to you by Cogstop Productions, home of podcast, tabletop, and geek talk. 12 Years Hollow, the Cog Talk theme, is written and performed by Bear Ghost. To listen to this track and more, check out www.facebook.com slash Bear Ghost Attacks. Hi, welcome to Cog Talk. I'm Patrick. I'm Scott. And I'm Josh. I still fucking hate you. <laughs> and today we are recording from inside the Matrix. No. Oh, deja vu. You're saying no. Prove us wrong. Prove, prove you wrong. I can't. Therefore, you were wrong. We are no, right. No, no, that's just theory. It's impossible to prove whether reality is real or not. Isn't that what faith is based off of? That's what a lot of things that you can't prove or disprove are based off of. So we're in the Matrix. I'm still saying no. And you're still wrong. No, I'm still just not proven right. Well, it could it could be a little worse. Uh, we could be in the Marvel universe right now. Scott, what's going on with the Marvel universe? Oh, let's see. Well, good news: Captain America is now black. Uh, Falcon will be taking over that role. Um, so that's it's about time. Captain America stealing shit is not good news. <laughs> Falcon doesn't steal shit. And it, well, he's not Captain Falcon America. anymore, he's Captain America. Captain now America he's not just a black Captain America. At what point would Falcon be like, you know what, man, I don't need wings anymore, I want a shield? Or do you think they're going to try and blend the two so it's a flying Captain America? No. So, so like when he arrives on a, a scene, it's like, ah, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> Comerica. <laughs> America! <laughs> <laughs> It's the only good thing to come out of that Dunham movie, Jeff Dunham movie. Um, no, they're, they're not going to cross him. The Falcon will become Captain America, just Captain America, no crossover. Um, on top of that, Thor is now a woman. Well, to be fair, it's not Thor himself growing tits. Correct. It's that he's lost uh, the ability to use Mjolnir. Yes, you got the name right. Yes. Well, yeah. yeah. I, I prefer to call it Mjolnir. That's the armor from Halo. Yes. Why yeah. not? It, it's Mjolnir. Uh, he no longer Good is worthy. Thing. The I know the armor are. in Halo is based on the concept of Mjolnir for some god awful reason. Yeah. Um, he is no longer worthy of wielding the hammer. So Mjolnir. A what I, I'm assuming a human will end up picking it up because they haven't dis, they haven't disclosed. Who, uh, who the female is that will get the hammer. Um, there are some people saying that it will be an Asgardian, others saying it will be a different alien race, others saying that it will be human. My, my question is this. Like, how bad do you have to fuck up to not be worthy to be yourself? I haven't <laughs> kept track with the comics. Did he, like, beat puppies with the hammer? And the hammer's <laughs> like, dude, I'm not doing this anymore. Fuck you. <laughs> Wait, come back, hammer son. Mjolnir, no! I'm Chris Hemsworth, and for some reason I talk like this. Hey, Odin's beard. Odin's Hammer, beard. Where art thou? Um, it, it hasn't happened in the comic books yet, so it, it hasn't been explained how he's going to become unworthy of it. Something's going to happen. Kill Captain America, and then Falcon takes over and whoops his ass. I don't know. <laughs> he missed with the hammer and killed <laughs> Cap. <laughs> There you go. There and Odin's you. like, you're not my son anymore. And Falcon's you, like, random woman, you're my son, daughter thing. I really hope it's not a human woman, because like everyone else that's wielded the hammer has been like someone that's deserved it. So you know, like Thor being the son of Odin, and then like Beta Ray Bill was like trying to save his race. And I, I really hope it's not like Sally Jones walking down the street like, oh, a hammer's sweet. Oh, wow, this thing's actually really light. <laughs> like, it has to be someone that's already epic. It doesn't have to be. It really doesn't. If you want to reestablish the universe, then you can make it a random person who is worthy, who's gone through, you know, whatever trials in her life, gets the hammer like and the becomes a hero. Like yeah. Hal Jordan. Ice cream man. 
Like I'm not saying that didn't count. Ice Cream Man totally counted. He didn't know what he had. It doesn't. That's what makes it even better. That's how pure of a soul, like to do good out in the world, he was. Yeah, um, I'm not saying like it has to be someone with an established story already. What I'm saying is, is that it, they better have a damn good backstory for why they have that goddamn hammer. Yeah. Another thing that I was thinking about, if you look at Thor's hammer, it actually says Thor on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's like, uh, it's got the inscription that I'm paraphrasing, uh, that he who is worthy has power of the hammer, something like that. But it actually power says Thor. The power of, okay, so it's the power of Thor. Yeah. It's not actually Thor, so they don't have to change no, the name on the hammer. Like, no, Odin, like, in the original version of it, strips uh, Thor of everything he is, throws him to Earth, and he ends up somehow finding the hammer as a crippled doctor. Yeah, like he only got the hammer after he proved himself worthy for so the his movie wasn't that hammer. far off. Yeah. I'm I'm oh, hoping man. that was that in English? Was that written in English on the hammer? Because Asgardians read and write in English. It translates to the com- whatever common tongue. Oh, okay. Because I was really hoping that they got it and they it says Thor right on the hammer. It's like, oh, I wonder who that guy is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the daughter of the ice cream man. I'm telling you. No one brings greater good into the world than a guy who runs around a crappy van to give kids ice cream for money. And ruin the intros to the podcasts. (laughs) On top of that, you have uh, Iron Man is getting a, quote, new set of armor. Because he's actually used the armor before. He's going back to the all-silver stuff. See, I... Like, this is just me. I don't know why Marvel has decided that this year is going to be their big PC year. That's political correctness. Yeah. Uh, and why they're doing it with established franchises already. Like Falcon being the new Captain America. One, I don't understand because Falcon flies. And it's like, why would he ever want to stop that? And two, why would you not just make the Falcon storyline better and more important? So that way he becomes a front runner in character. Because the name Falcon is, the name Falcon isn't awesome. It's not on that level of Captain America. So you can't make him as awesome as Captain America. You can't improve that story very much. So you make him Captain America and then he becomes better. I do have to say I've seen the costume and I don't like it. Like my my thing though is... Why Why do this? Because we all know that nerds and geeks hate change. I mean, you see it every time they release a new Dungeons & Dragons edition where, like, half the fan base is like, Fuck that, I'm staying with 2nd edition. Thacko for life, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, and you see it when, like, something happens in a movie that changes, or, you know, like, slightly goes off of what the book did. That's not canon. Yeah, and so to go completely, like, mm, right turn and just, like, sub one character out for another. But that's expected in comic books because every comic book universe ha- is follows the multiverse theory. Yeah. Uh, more so, this is... Marvel does the mantle change. Yeah. For a, uh, for a certain number of their heroes that can. So I'm not surprised. I am disappointed, but then again... This is a really weird time. How do you explain Mrs. Mar- uh, Miss Marvel? What do you mean? She's Muslim now. Well, she's... Uh... Like, I'm not saying that, uh, that there's anything wrong with it. I'm just... Uh, I'm trying to figure out how that mantle changes. I don't know her origins. I think they just rebooted the character and made her the younger girl instead okay. of being the, uh, the sword agent. But... Man. Sword and shield. Yeah. yeah that, that was the pun. You didn't get that? No. Uh, Stupid I, DC fans. Honestly, I don't read comic books too often. Yeah. But in any time that they've done one of these mantle changes, they always retcon it or, you know, go full circle so it goes back to the way it was. Okay. So then what's your real concern? It's not that it's going... It's not, I'm not sitting there like, Steve Rogers is gone forever. No. But I'm. my thing is, is like, why do it in the first place? If you know in maybe a year, you're going to switch it back. 
Uh, explore new ideas, allow them to you know create some extra new villains. It, it basically, it's a way to refresh their uh, storyline. People. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I I always see it just as like a little cop out where it's like, uh, well, what if Billy was the Red Ranger instead? I, I, I I'm gonna make a stupid face as I say that. <laughs> it, it, I think if it's more of a way to refresh everyone, and then when and they realize, okay, this isn't working, they go back. Then they also have extra tools and toolbox for any like major comic book storylines. Oh, whereas like, well, I was a better cat than you, Steve. It's like, yeah, well, now you've got your bird wings back, Dick. My name's not Dick. <laughs> no one knows my name. They only know me as Falcon. America. Yeah, yeah, America. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I just I don't think that this is going to last too long in the span of comic books. What do you think it's going to do for the movies? No, and nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh, at least for the phases that they have out right now. So going into I think phase four, which is magic. No phase. Yeah, phase four because phase two was Avengers two phase or it was Avengers phase three is going to be uh, Ultron and then phase four is going to be Doctor Strange. Yeah, either way, uh, I don't think that they'll change the movies up at all. One, considering that they have all, most of these guys signed up for multiple contracts, it wouldn't make sense for them to be a Chris Evans like, hey, the comic book changed, so uh, bye. Well, Chris Evans out of everyone would be the one to do it. He doesn't want to act anymore. He wants to be a director. But he loves playing in the Marvel movies. He does. But he's said that as soon as his Captain America contract is up, he's gone. He yeah. will not resign. Yeah, he's, he's, Captain America is the only character he really wants to play. He wants to direct now. I just want to make sure you're saying it correctly because it's not like he was saying, like, fuck acting. No, no, no. Yeah, he's not, like, defiantly playing Captain America. No, no. He, he's doing that because he legitimately enjoys it. And it's the only thing in acting he really enjoys at this moment. I gotta say, I really like him as Captain America. Steve he make, Rogers? He makes a great Steve Rogers. Yeah. Especially when they CGI'd his big head on a tiny body. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that was ridiculous, but it was great. <laughs> yeah, they, they've casted Marvel really well up to this point. Well, even DC does good casting. Mm. I'm gonna say it. The movie was horrible, but the actor was great. Green Lantern, Ryan Reynolds. He played a great Hal Jordan. He did as well as he could with that crappy script. I'm pretty sure we, uh, you, you could pick a character that Ryan Reynolds just figure can fit in. And he would do it well. Yeah. So that's not saying much. Nathan Drake. He would do well. I don't think so. Nathan Drake. I don't think he... I don't think he has the face for it. Like, I've shown you the face of the guy I think should do Nathan Drake, but... Yeah, it's whose name we can't remember. What was the guy from those fucking commercials? And I think oh, it's something. I Adam Scott. Yeah, yeah. There's Adam Scott and oh, I forgot his name again. I keep doing it. Um, Carl Urban. Or Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion's too old. No, Nathan, Nathan yes. Fillion will never be too old. <laughs> yes, he can. He can do a high school movie at age sixty. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because he's awesome. 65 Jump Street? Yes. <laughs> 13 going on 70. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that Carl Urban would make a great Nathan Drake. Uh, I, I still showed you uh, him yes. making a face exactly the same as Nathan Drake made, and they were perfect. No, you, the, what was his name? Adam, Adam Scott. Scott. Adam Scott. He, he's got it. But we don't know if he's, like, tested in, like, that kind of personality. Yeah, yeah that's I the agree. only thing we don't know. Yes. Carl Urban, I think, could definitely do it. He's got, he doesn't have as good of a match of the face, but he can def he definitely has the acting range for it. So, jumping topics. Uh, so, we haven't had, yep. Yeah, soap, 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 soap. <laughs> that's your transitional word. Yeah, I was trying to think of a nice way to segue, and my segue happens to run on soap. Not butterscotch? Not butterscotch. Although butterscotch has some of the letters for so in it. Specifically, the letters, letters for so in it. <laughs> well, it has some extra ones, so those can get lost. Uh, we haven't done a music war in a while. 
I don't want to get this one done before the plug. That's because I don't like losing. No, well, I don't like losing either, but I guarantee you that Scott cannot win this one. I've hired some people. Oh, okay. You've got your own acorn? No, let's just say that Scott might go missing if he wins this one. He will end up in Flagstaff. Okay. So, so Scott, want to play a game? Challenge accepted. Music Wars for this week. The most annoying song that you can have in your head on repeat. Calling it right now, you cannot use What's Up Pussycat, because John Mulaney is a comic genius and he already told the story of the Salt and Pepper Diner. If you haven't heard that yet, check out John Mulaney. He is fucking amazing as a comic. So the most annoying song that you can have in your head on repeat. Who's got one in the chamber? Oh, I do. Oh, let's have you go first then, Josh. Michael Jackson's Beat It. Oh, good what? God. That's that, a great song. It's a great it, song, it, the it first is. couple playthroughs. No, I, I could I, I could drive from and, here to New York with that song on repeat the entire way. No, and I'll say this, because whenever you have a song repeating in your hand, it's not the whole song. You never hear the whole song. It's again. just that one line. It's just that, seri- that one stanza. Yeah, so you probably would just have in your head going, beat it, 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 beat it. No one wants to be defeated to gets in there. Beat it, beat it. But that's it. And that drives me up the fucking wall. Because that's just the smallest part of the line. And I know so many other songs that would be just so much better to be stuck in my head. Because that just sounds like a bad idea every time, especially since I'm working in customer service right now. Yeah. And, you know, that song is problematic because you just can't beat it, beat it. All right, Pat, what's your choice? What's my choice? Yeah. Uh, The one that I had to go for, like, originally I was going to say Bohemian Rhapsody. (laughs) Because that song would just be torturous and depressing after a while. (laughs) <laughs> we were just sitting there like crying in tears like oh, 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 please make this stop no 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 uh mine would oh, be mia, mama mia. yeah uh mine is actually a jingle <laughs> and i would hate for uh the mentos song to be stuck in my head on repeat <laughs> The Mentos fresh up, dub 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 dub. Mentos fresh up, the dub 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 for your life. Mentos, the fresh maker. Then it just starts up again. Mentos. Fresh. <laughs> that would be like torture because it's just a jingle, and so it's only like a set amount of time, <laughs> and so you would hear that like possibly like a hundred and twenty times in an hour. Like, oh. that's what I would use for psychological warfare oh. in countries. I would just have that blaring off speakers. Like, that would work better than dubstep for nations that never heard of dubstep before. <laughs> just the Mentos thing. You would have people driving themselves off cliffs. Maybe. Because this was a fresh maker. And you have some of the stupid images from the song, too, because of the commercial. So you have, like, the guy, like, in the suit that got paint on it. He's like, oh, just roll on the bench more. Now it's a perfect pinstripe suit. When people would just look at him like, dude, you have fucking paint on your suit. Like, all the fuck over. You would just have those stupid Mentos moments. So, yes, Mentos. The Fresh Maker and the Life Taker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What you got, Scott? Um, this one is kind of playing to the audience who has been through high school and gone through what I have. This song has... I, I believe this song has played in the back of my mind since high school. The Bop by the Hansons. Oh, so... Mm-bop. Bop. Mm-bop. Yeah. Um, when I was in high school, they had this thing called Stop the Bop, where between classes and at lunches and before and after school, they would play this song over the PA system. And the only way to get it to stop was to donate a set amount of money. The students would donate, yes, they they were extorting their students. That that is psychological warfare. (laughs) Yes, it is. And there was one time, uh, it was my junior year, 
that I transferred schools. And at the same time that the school I was coming from had it going on, so did the other one. The worst part is the school I ended up at... Um, had twice the, the donation amount. <laughs> uh, no, the students were rebelling. No one was donating. It went on for about two weeks. And then this, the teacher stopped it because they were getting annoyed. But two weeks of before school, after school, lunch, and between classes of hearing the bop, which was worse be when they started the song at 6 a.m. because the ROTC students got there at 6 a.m. for drill team practice. And then after school until like 5. You know, I will say good on the students for rebelling because that is a dirty, down, deep, fucking cheap trick <laughs> for is. administration to do. Like, if I was at a Safeway and they were like, hey, until you buy shit, I'm going to lock you in the store and constantly play this song, it would be anarchy. <laughs> I would be throwing milk jugs at courtesy clerks. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would be knocking people the fuck out. Like, I'm, I'm surprised, like, desks didn't go flying. Like, I hate this fucking song. That may have happened. Scott, did you throw a desk? Because that is a very uh, Boondocks-esque reminder for me. Um, or like as soon as you throw a chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I plead the fifth. I'm going to go with that one. Safe answer. Cowardly, but safe. It's not even applicable. You can only do that in court until you get to Supreme Court. No, you can still do it in Supreme Court. You can do it in any instance where you may implicate yourself in a crime. Technically, throwing a desk is a crime. It's considered attempted. Uh, it's considered assault. Scott, you didn't say you're throwing it at someone. D no, throwing it a in a classroom <laughs> is considered assault. Or yeah, and you get like thirty targets in there. All kids, you know, brainwashed from the bop. Yeah, so you're just gonna bop them with the desk. It's the school's fault at this point. So, like, that's a great scenario. Like, what would be the worst song to play over the PA all the time? Like, beat it, the Mentos <laughs> jingle. Or that song. Like, that, that's a way of looking at it, audience, is you are walking somewhere, you know, you're in a store, you're in your car on the radio, and this song just will not escape you. Which song would you want to listen to least? Yes, which, which song is making you have homicidal thoughts? I think you may have just given me this vote. Yep. Because Beat It is a good song. The Mento song, most people haven't heard in years. And even then, it's there's a, a reason yeah, why it's white noise at one at some point. But the bop is never white noise. It is white noise because it has the same chords. Whereas Mentos has that drop off for the Mentos, the fresh maker, and it resets in your mind. And Beat It has that classic guitar rift that starts up in the beginning with the and as soon as you hear that, you know if the song has started again. Like, I can actually see people who beat it, like, tying hands together and just getting into knife fights. Like, dude, you stab me, I stab you, we're done with this song. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. And the other one looks at him with big teary eyes, like, I always loved you like a brother. Stab! You were supposed to stab me, too! <laughs> <laughs> I lied. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, suicide packs to Michael Jackson. <laughs> and that guy's dead, so he can't sue us for saying that. I don't think anyone can sue us for saying that. Freedom yeah. of speech. So, what song do you hate the most? What song is going to drive you absolutely mad? What song is going to make you, I don't know, want to beat a bag of puppies with another bag of puppies? You can choose Josh with... Beat It by Michael Jackson. You can choose me with Mentos, the Fresh Maker jingle. Or you can choose Scott with The Bop by the Hansons. It's Mbop for the record. I, mm -mm, I refuse to call it by its real name. All right, well, I'm going to put the bop, and then when no one can Google what the bop is, you will lose. People are going to Google the bop by the Hansons, no, and guess what? Google will correct them and then send them to the yeah, at hop. Did you mean mbop? <laughs> God, that would suck to be Google. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen College Humor's uh, If Google Was a Guy? Before you do that, check the show notes for the poll. We will have it up with the episode. You can vote there. You can vote once per day, and if you vote for Patrick, you can vote three times per day. Go on. I'm still going to win. Have you seen College Humor's If Google Were a Guy? 
that is the most brilliant series that I've seen. It have, really is. Have you seen that? Yeah, I feel so bad. Uh, How many have you seen? I only need to see one. They've got three. I don't care. <laughs> and at the end of one of them, it's this guy sitting at his desk. He's like straightening it all up. It's a really nice, fancy yeah, desk. Yeah, it's an Asian guy. At that and it's uh, on his name tag is Bing. Yeah. And hey there's guys. No one there. Hey guys, I'm 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 still here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the one I've seen. Which me. is unfortunate, because Bing is a good search engine, but Google has been around for so long, it's stuck in everybody's head, that it's not going It's a anywhere. verb. No, it, 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 You know what? It's such a good word in itself that it can be used as a verb, Where, whereas Bing is just sounds awkward. I'm going to go Bing something. You're going to Bing it, Bing it. I swear to God, I'm going to punch you in the dick till it comes out your ass. See, that song is torturous. I hate it. Yeah, uh, my favorite thing is that they got, and I'm I'm sorry if I butcher his name, but Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray as a cameo at the end of the the, the third one. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, and just some of the jokes that they come up with are just fucking priceless. The Google Voice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, watch the video. It's on collegehumor.com. It, and it's, like we said, if Google was a guy. It's also on youtube.com slash collegehumor. Yep. Uh, this sounds like a great time for a plug. Hey, guess what? We don't have a plug this week. But if you want to hear this voice, this sultry, loving voice, soft as silk, in it, talk about your product, your items, and your services, you should contact us at cogstopproductions at gmail.com. Scott's finger is so close to my nose right now, he could pick it. And we know that you're supposed to pick your friends, pick your nose, but don't pick your friend's nose. So if you want to have your services talked about on Cog Talk, email us. We are also in the market for doing promo swaps. That's right. If you are a podcast listener and you want your podcast promo to be playing at this time slot, have your voice heard on our podcast, send us a clip. We'll do a clip exchange, and hey, we'll share some fan base. Next topic. So. Yeah, I didn't have to say it this time. So, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this month has been one of the weirdest months for crime. We, I was just surfing the smokinggun.com on their buster page, and we've got some fucked up things that have happened this month. Uh, which one would you like to hear about first? Taco Bell or Chipotle? Chipotle. Taco Bell. Chipotle. Okay, this was a really bad choice because there's <laughs> only two people to vote. So I vote for Taco Bell. No. Yes. That's okay. We'll get to Chipotle. I win another vote. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> son of a fucking bitch. So, this was reported on July 15th, 2014. Uh, Massachusetts... Taco Bell employee shoots hungry slash angry customer with a BB gun. Here's the report. A Massachusetts man displeased with the customer service he received during a weekend Taco Bell run ended with him allegedly being shot with a BB gun by an employee of the fast food chain. According to Springfield Police, officers responding to a call about a possible holdup early Saturday morning discovered a 26-year-old man banging on the restaurant's store. The man told the cops he went to the drive-thru to get some tacos, and they put that in quotes. So, tacos. Yeah, I, I don't know why they put that in quotes. Like, man, I was just trying to get some tacos. Yes, uh-huh, get some tacos. <laughs> because tacos... Totally a drug reference. Tacos are Mexican food. Taco Bell is not Mexican food. So they're But then why wouldn't they just put the parentheses around tacos? Like, they quoted him as get some tacos. Sorry. But after a long wait for service, he banged on the window and yelled, but no one would help him. The customer, according to police, then became angry because he was hungry and headed from his car to the eatery to complain about the poor service. He was met at the locked front door by Taco Bell employee Steve Noska. According to the victim, Noska shoved him and then went into his car and got a BB gun. The man told cops Noska then shot him several times and also struck him with the weapon before returning to the restaurant. 
Nasco, who had bite marks on his arm, allegedly caused the hungry customer... Er, yeah, he had bite marks on his arm caused by the hungry customer, was hit with multiple counts of assault and battery. He was arraigned yesterday in the district court and released from custody for posting a $250 bill. But he will be back in court on August 28th. The, he got bit by the customer? Yeah, and beat him with a BB gun. I would... He's that, lucky... That's mm. still actually considered assault with a deadly weapon now. Yeah. Yeah, to be hit with the no, gun. No, no, no. to be bit. If you spit on someone, that's assault with a deadly weapon. Really? Yeah. It, 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 basically, the human mouth is a dirty, dirty thing. Yeah. I mean, we have filthy fucking words come out of it, so... Yeah. And, you know... But... Oh, my Vagina God. Teeth. This is just, like... It's Massachusetts, and I'm from Connecticut, so I know a little bit about Massachusetts. And you have, like, cities like Boston, which are kind of like... You know, they're neighbors. So it's, it's like Glendale to Peoria, if, to put it in Arizona. So the standards. No, except this is states. So you're, like, Arizona to Nevada. We know plenty about Nevada because they're our neighbor. It's hot there. Yeah. No, no, no. Arizona to Nevada is way different. I can't walk from Arizona to Nevada in three hours. The states on the East Coast are like little piss ants. They're like, oh, I'm in Phoenix. Okay, you're talking and I'm about going across the entire state. Yeah. You yeah. can cross okay, the I was going to say, because there's a point in Arizona where you can be in four states at once. Oh, fuck you, Scott. But uh, Massachusetts has some great cities like you know, Boston. But then they have some, like, really backwoody areas. And I'm guaranteeing you this was some, like, backwoods bullshit going on between a man who wants tacos biting another man who's refusing to give him tacos. <laughs> that customer is lucky that he did not end up in a coma or something. You bite someone because you want tacos... You get the shit beat out of you. But he was really, really hungry. I don't care. If somebody... Last time somebody tried to bite me, I put my fist through their face. Through? Yes. So, like, out the back and everything? No, no, just the face. Not not the entire head, just the face. <laughs> and it still... There's a man walking around with a sphincter for a face because you fisted him? Yes. <laughs> this is what happens. So this guy's lucky he didn't get shot with a real gun. Yeah, at the at the point that I get bit, I know that my mind's going to, like, well, I've got bite marks on me. I can just beat this guy the fuck down and claim self-defense at this point. Yeah, at that point, it's it's not even that it's a whole thought process. It's like, he bit me. Mother, Kill it dead. Yeah, motherfucker. Like, that's how that one ends. Yeah. I know you wanted to hear about Chipotle, Josh. Yes. Here we go. From the East Coast again. Delaware duo arrested for having sex on the roof of a Chipotle. Which, I have to compliment them off the title alone. They chose a classier place. Because, like, if they were fucking on a Burger King, that's a little seedy. But Chipotle... Pounding her patties. Yeah, pounding her patties. So you're just saying it's a better class hey, of puns. she was satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> How did they get to the roof of the Chipotle? Like, that that takes some thought. Not really. Uh, most of those buildings for fast food places, you, you'll see them as you pull around the buildings for the drive through have stairwells. Yeah, well, or an no, access ladder. Well, yeah. no, no, what I'm saying is, you have to think, let's go to the roof and fuck. Or they both work there and are like, hey, I have the keys to the stairs that lead to the roof. No one will see us there except for maybe a helicopter. But that's not likely to happen. Yeah, and then how did they get caught? Well, here's the report. A couple was arrested Saturday. <coughs> a couple was arrested Saturday night after cops spotted them having sex on the roof of a Chipotle restaurant in Delaware. According to Newark Police Department's Newark, not New York. <laughs> cops responded to the uh, responded to the eatery around 9:40 p.m. after receiving multiple witness reports about a, about and this is in quotes. Two people engaging in sexual intercourse on the rooftop of Chipotle. Instead of, there's people fucking on the restaurant. Stick your beef stick in my taco. So other people called the cops because they could see these people <coughs> fucking on the roof. Yep. After arriving on the scene, an officer clearly observed the two defendants engaging in sexual intercourse on the roof at the very front of the Chipotle building, quotes, according to police. Though the cop directed the duo to cease copulating, they continued for approximately 
15 to 20 seconds before stopping. What what is that? Is that just like Is that a cop? Oh shit, that is a cop. <coughs> Shut up, that's a cop. Stop. Sorry, sorry. I'm just I have to finish. Yeah, okay. I'm done. When the patrolman announced that the pair was under arrest, they fled from the roof and ran to a nearby apartment where they were later apprehended. Mike Sue, I can only I guess that's his last name, S U H or Suh, and Nicole Germack were each charged with lewdness, resisting arrest, indecent exposure, conspiracy, and loitering. Con- conspiracy to <laughs> make babies. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're sitting there in front of the place casing it out like we're totally going to fuck on that. It's unfortunate that conspiracy is such a broad term that they can use it for almost anything. <laughs> because they plan to have sex up there. That's conspiracy. Get this. They were each released from custody on an $1,800 bond. The guy who shot another guy was released on two fifty. It's a BB gun, and he got bit. It is way better to shoot someone than it is to fuck someone. With a BB gun, you have to. <laughs> yeah, it has to gun. be a BB gun. Yeah, and it was. I guess you could label it self defense. The guy was trying to eat me. I wouldn't give him tacos to eat, so he tried to bite my arm off. I shot him with a BB gun. Get this though. I'm reading underneath. It says uh, Michael Suh. Lives next door to the restaurant, and his apartment window may look out at the fast food joint's roof. If your apartment is that close, what made you stop and be like, oh, let's, yeah, let's do it on the chili pepper? <laughs> Just so weird. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a man, but I've never been horny enough to be, be like, we are going to fuck on this restaurant right now. Let me He's climb a bathroom. ladder. Let me climb a ladder. He was claiming the territory, that's all. Like if he came on there, this Chipotle is now his. <laughs> yes. He's a franchise owner. He's a franchise owner. <laughs> that, that, that's how you get in. <laughs> that man has spirit. Get him a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And then Scott showed me one on Geekology earlier today that was just, it's the most brilliant crime. It's the most stupid crime. But it is freaking hilarious. And the best part about it is there's a video. So if you go to geekology.com and look for the title, Couple Steals $10,000 Baby Dino Replica from Museum. That's right, there's some dinosaur theft in this state. Grand Theft Theftosaurus? Yep. Grand Theft Dino. Duh. Per Geekology. Police are looking for a young couple who stole a replica of a hatching duck-billed dinosaur, and they give the name of the dinosaur, and I'm just going to try and do this, Edmontosaurus, Edmontosaurus, from the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences earlier this week. As seen in the surveillance footage, the dick bag in the stupid shorts jumps a glass barrier and yanks the little dino from a nest. And before you call the police, no, it wasn't me. I'm not some baby snatcher. That was all from Geekology. Uh, I think it was bad. It might have been me. I was in North Carolina last week. Uh, The replica is about 12 to 14 inches long and worth $10,000. They have the video, but they have not caught them yet. So they stole, was it Ducky? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They totally stole Ducky right out of the museum. Oh, update. Uh, Both suspects turned themselves in. And the guy is uh, being held under a $2,000 secured bond. So, fucking on the roof of Chipotle is slightly less worse than stealing a replica dinosaur. Why did they turn themselves in? Probably because they were on the news. Because they have footage of them. Oh, yeah. And it's like, oh, well, we can either wait for the cops to come get us, or we can turn ourselves in. And, you know, we seem better because, like, hey, you didn't have to come get us. <laughs> I want to see, like, I wish dinosaurs existed, because it would have been great to see the crocodile hunter go against dinosaurs. Like, we're going to play a trick on this dinosaur by stealing its baby. And I'm going to stick it with all my thumb in its eyes. <laughs> More like his <laughs> arm. Like, <laughs> and then, like, the dinosaur takes off, and he's, like, being dragged behind, like, cry guy! <laughs> so it's not a stingray that takes him out. No, it's a dinosaur sphincter. Oh. That's right. Dinosaur ass killed Steve Irwin. Oh. 
That's just wrong. <laughs> it has been a very weird month in crime. It has been. Look, all crimes at the end of the day are crimes of opportunity. So it's just like <laughs> I want to know. Like the thing I care about is what were like the convergent forces that led to them to make this decision and think it was a good idea. Like stealing a replica dinosaur. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to what purpose? <laughs> Does that serve them? No. That made them go like, yeah, we totally need that. No, I don't get it. This is going to look great in the apartment. I will say that there has been a few times I've been driving around and I've seen a giraffe statue. Record deleted. (laughs) I've seen a giraffe statue. I've thought about taking it. I haven't. But I've thought about it because I have a friend. Who his favorite animal is a giraffe, and everybody everybody knows this about him. They're like, "Oh, we should take this giraffe and give it to you as a gift," and that nobody does. And I've been thinking, if someone were to do it, it would probably be me. So why haven't I done it yet? Are you this guy's only black friend? No. Okay. Are you his Falcon to his Captain America? That makes he's just gonna steal his costume and claim to be him. Oh yeah, that's right. Get my job at GameStop back. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Such prestige. Look at you with your little lanyard and your geeky pins. Those lanyards and pins were awesome. Not as awesome as Cogstop pins. Coming soon to the store. I'd wear those more. Why are you shaking your head at me? No reason. Because I was talking about theft? No, no reason at all. Because you like pins and lanyards. Excuse me for being a geek. I, I, I don't think Scott's really fat. I think he's just stuffed so full of nerd. <laughs> like like under one boob is like all the yo-yo tricks in the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. Even though you don't know much about yo-yos, we discovered that after the show where like, that was the extent of your knowledge of yo-yos. I'm still going to give you shit for knowing that much about yo-yos. <laughs> Because it was just beautiful to see. Like, I did not know that you had that knowledge. You know, one of these days, I'm going to bring in a yo-yo, and I'm just going to... Just I'll, school I'm, I'm yo-yo. Yeah. And just bring it back to its original purpose as a lethal weapon. Yes. Are we going to have to direct a uh, yo-yo movie that's kind of like dance movies? <gasps> we no. We so do that. Absolutely not. Bad idea. Great idea. Bad idea. Eh, you will make an idea. Because then we sell yo-go- yo-yos. Yo-yos. <laughs> We sell yo-yos that are branded from the movie. So you have, like, the Crix one. Because, you know, oh. that guy has to be so awesome that he took out the S of Chris and put an X instead. Oh. You can oh. play Crix. No. No, he has to play someone named, like, Duncan. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. You get your little bumblebee, you're an old school one. You're like, I've been yo-yoing for 30 years. <laughs> Even though you're not 30. Oh. So, god damn it. <laughs> now, now that's been brought up. <laughs> yeah, you made it a whole thing. I hate you. God damn it. Speaking of Dunkins, addicting games. It has nothing to do with Dunkins. Donuts. But I did not use soap. Actually, you did... By mentioning you didn't use so. But no, no, before so. that, he said so, and then he laughed at the yo-yo thing, and then he went on. Yeah, so he didn't actually transition with that so. But the, the so in the sentence. He did he transition with the so. The so was just, or the no, transition was, was interrupted. The transition. Fine, new segue. Anyways. <laughs> so. Addicting games. Go. Um, I've been playing a game on congregate.com. That's with a K. Uh called The Dead Zone, or sorry, The Last Stand, Dead Zone, by Con Artist Games. And I realize now that there are just some games that I think are designed to be super fucking addicting to people. Uh, If you guys haven't played it, it's a resource management game, so it's like you gotta get food, water, cloth, metal, and wood, and pretty much build, build your fortress up, make it better. Get more people for your fortress to make it better, and then do the bigger, better fortresses to get bigger, better fortresses. Is there an end game? Uh, you are the best, and you can piss on all of the peons around you. So there is no end game. There is no end game. It's just a constant game. It's kind of like uh, I've been told Farmville, but with guns and zombies. Never played Farmville. 
But yeah, uh, what are what are some games that you would consider addicting? And then if we have a little time at the end of this, I want to talk about what you think makes these games so addicting. Uh, mine, and it's not. I I don't really get stuck on games, but uh, there's games I'll always come back to. And currently, it's one of the free for gold games that came out a while back, and it was Ascend Hand of Coal. Oh that's yeah, another, that was that's another grinder. That that was so fun though. You get the little people and you get to smash your other little people with yeah. your big guy. Or yeah. you can launch them at other big guys just to like do little bits of damage. And then you can try to steal other people's land by killing their little guys. Not 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 their little guys, you kill their big guys that are left like defending. Oh no, you have to take over land by killing little guys of other gods. Yes. If the land isn't taken over already. Yes. Yeah. Uh, through the story mode you do yeah. that, yeah. But uh, the after thing yeah, it's just been it's neat to come back to that game as things change and stuff. I haven't played that game in so long. I might go back today and jump in, see where see where see where my land is at, see how much how little land I have left. I, I just checked it last night on mine, and for some reason, like blue is just like gone ape shit on all my territory. So I'm gonna have to take out those uh, members of the God of the Void in your face, Void. Even though that's where I started. Yeah. yeah, I went and then I went evil. <laughs> what about you, Scott? What what game do you have under your sleeve? Minecraft. Oh, yeah. And the the only end game to that is really you know, build collect, your fortress. Yeah, <laughs> you, you build your house. You um collect materials, raw materials like diamonds. You make armor, weapons, you get levels to enchant, you make an enchanting table, you enchant all your shit, you go to the end, which is a different dimension, and you kill the Ender Dragon. That's the only thing that Xbox has right now in the way of an end game. When the Xbox One comes out, we'll have the Wither and PC. The number of mods that PC has just makes that an infinite game. There's now, so many things to do. I was actually at your place yesterday, and we were watching a Twitch stream. Yes. Of someone playing that, what tw what what uh, Twitch Twitcher Twitch streamer streamer, yeah. What streamer were you watching yesterday? Because they had the creepiest fucking skin pack in my in the. Okay, yeah, he had a texture pack on, and who um, was that? His name is uh, Tom Syndicate. Uh, he has what is it? his Twitter is Syndic uh, Pro Syndicate. His Twitch name is Syndicate, and I implore you to watch this guy in one day. For one day, at one point in the day, he had 120,000 people watching him play Minecraft, which put him alone, put uh, had more viewers than all of League of Legends combined, which League of Legends is always the most viewed stream on Twitch. But he alone oh, just shadowed uh, League of Legends. Yeah. He, I was... I was hanging out with Scott yesterday, and we were watching him play a game as we were doing some other things. And he has a skin pack that makes the villagers look like blonde-haired, like normal people. Uh -huh. But it, it it creeped me out on such a fucking level because all their what they don't blink or anything like that. So all it was was a whole bunch of blonde guys with beady black eyes with their hands together staring at you and he went into a room where there was like 30 of them <laughs> and all the villagers when you get within a certain range of them all the villagers look at you and so that's what he was saying <laughs> yeah it was just like 30 eyes staring at the screen and I was I literally because you had uh, the connect at, well, at one point I'm like Xbox go to YouTube I'm just like I can't watch <laughs> this anymore this is the creepiest <laughs> It was so unnerving to me. It was like the freakiest fucking thing for some reason. As he was like, oh yeah, I'll give you books for this, and I'll give you wheat for this. It was just like, how could you do that? These people are going to fucking kill you. <laughs> no. They all have murder face. The funny thing is, all the villagers in Minecraft, pacifists. The villagers will not attack you. Not these ones. These ones are going fucking shoving bees down your face like the Wicker Man. They're, f they're followers of Dianite. They it's a part of the stream. They know how it got burned. It was awesome. So we got Minecraft, we got uh, Ascend, right? Yeah. And we've got uh, The Last Stand. In our last few minutes, what, what do you think makes these games so addicting? 
Uh, I know my opinion for The Last Stand is, is that it gives you quick success at the beginning, but it gives you a delayed reward towards the mid-game. Because when you first play it, it's like, oh yeah, you want to build a barricade? That'll take 30 seconds, no problem. You can speed it up if it's under 5 minutes. And you start doing that, and you're like, oh, this is really cool. And you get to like accumulate a little bit of defense and comfort and security uh, in the beginning of it. But I've played this game for a week now, and it's like, oh yeah, you want a kitchen? That'll take seven days. <laughs> and it's real time. Ugh. So like, I have to come back every like day and be like, yep, I still got five more days on that kitchen, and then I'm going to have something to cook with, and my people will be happy. And Until I still... you get another person. Yeah. And then all the, st- like, all the uh, rewards go down, and they have their fuel system, which is like their in-game currency. That will speed things up, and you can buy better things. And you can find a little bit of fuel here and there, but for $20, you can have 2,000 fuel. And so it's that it's that urge of, like, no, everything was going so quicker before. I want, I want it now. I want it now. Yeah, the microtransactions. Yeah, and so, you know, I, I did put some money towards the game. It was more so of me showing support, because I do like people that make games, and if I have an opportunity to give them money in some way, I will. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a big fan of Congregate's coin system, where you can actually just throw uh, your credits at the developer saying, you know, hey, thank you for making the game. And it's kind of like a, almost like a Bitcoin transaction. It isn't Bitcoin, it's more like Microsoft points, but they, you can take the money that you put into Congregate and give it to the developers for making yeah. a game. Uh, what about Ascent? What would you think the addicting factor is of Ascent, besides constantly losing your territories? That that's a minor thing because it's so much more rewarding to have lost the territory and then come back and whoop their ass and take it back. That that's a minor thing. There's a, a couple things I think are addicting about a sudden hand of call. One, their leveling system is neat because what it is, you get the like the first five levels when you first start playing, but then you level up, then you ascend your uh, your guy, which drops you back down a certain number of levels. Yeah, but boosts your cap. And you do that repeatedly. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So, like, you would play up to level 5 and then ascend. Yep. And it would drop you back down to level three. 3. But then now you get to work up to level 10. Yep. Drop down to 5, work up to 15. That kind of... Yeah. So you're forth. always backtracking, but then you're always going up again. Uh, so that's that's a really fun way to level, and it's also a nice way to add more to it. Because whereas, you know, I think... I, if I remember right, the cap was 50. I don't know if it's... If it's different now, I didn't check that out when I went back to it. Yeah. Uh, but, but essentially, you you'd you be do gaining. Like a, you do like maybe seventy five levels instead. Yeah, because you always go back a little bit to get forward again. Yes. If I remember correctly, you get to keep certain things. Where it's like, yeah, I might be level three, but I want to keep this armor, or I want to keep this ability that I had at yep. level five. Yep, and that's how they get you with their microtransactions. Is you can buy a bunch of souls in order to. Uh, make sure you have legacy items so the really cool armor you're wearing that would be that's really amazing at level five but would be godly at three will come back with you if yeah. you put uh, if you legacy it, if you make it a legacy item which you have to purchase in a ascending number of souls and you can do it like ten, nine times yeah but the great thing about uh, ascend hand of coal is on xbox it's free to play yes so that's you know something is it still free to play yep. it is okay. yeah yeah, so I remember when it was on the free for gold list, but I didn't know if they kept it free or not. Yeah. It's always free for gold members. So if you have a silver membership, since you can't play online games, okay. you can't play uh, Ascend. But if you have a gold membership, you can play the game, which I think is really a, a nice platform to do. If you're a beginning game developer, if you just want to get a game out there that everyone's playing. Yeah, and they did yeah. it as a beta release, too. They yeah. were even saying it was, this is our beta. Uh, and the other great thing is that you have three factions that you run, and during your ascension, at the end of your ascension, you can pick to run with uh, light, darkness, or void, which are your three gods to follow. And when you follow one, you cannot enter the dungeons of the other without purchasing a mask. Yeah. So you can constantly switch, you can get new powers by doing that if you want, and build your character with all the magics of all three gods if you choose to. It's pretty awesome. What about Minecraft? What what like I, I assume that the most addicting thing is just the ever expanding possibilities of this game. 
It is. Um, being able to... There was one guy who on PC Minecraft built a working Stargate. So if you're a Stargate fan, you can actually do this with command blocks, redstone, and it's a portal that you turn it on, the chevrons uh, encode and lock, you step through it, and you can end up on the other side of the map, which isn't normal in Minecraft. It's something that you have to create and work at. So anything you want to build, you can. PC, it's infinite. The uh, consoles are way more limited because you can't go in and change the coding of the game. But they're catching up. But they are catching up. You'll, you'll never have on the consoles what you have on the PC, but it is still super fun. I think when it comes down to it, all of these games have one thing in common that make them addictive, and that's the grind. The grind for getting yeah. the best materials, for becoming the best. Um, I, in Minecraft, it's finding diamonds, getting obsidian, uh, going to the nether, the end, getting all these resources, and just making a huge fortress that no mobs can get into. With um, Ascend, it's collecting the souls, getting the souls, getting your legacy items, getting to the cap, and becoming the strongest giant or whatever. I forgot yeah. what the hero was called. But becoming the strongest character and taking over everyone's territory. In um, Last Stand, even though I haven't played it yet, it's the same thing. You're building up your fortress. You're getting more people, more supplies to build more a bigger, gear. better fortress so that you can take on in uh, Last of Us, you can PvP. So you can take on other people and take their stuff. Yep. So it, it's really just, yeah, for me, it's the grind. The grind make, is what makes it addictive. Yeah, and I think that's what it comes down to. It, it, especially, like, just... Uh, and I don't know if they've released it, but they always had it up in their sanctum, which is, like, the center zone. It is PvP. So, uh, yeah, you're just... The moment you can, like, take what you've built and put it against other people is always the best thing. And it's always, like, my end game for any game I play with this. So that's where they really grab me. It's just building a better monster. Nice. Than an animals. Well, we are approaching the end of the episode, but I wanted to give everyone great news. Uh, I've already told you two, but now I'm telling the listeners... Uh, we just checked our numbers, and it turns out that we are doing better than the median of podcasts that have been out for a year. Most only have 172 listeners per month. We are having at least twofold, if not threefold, of that per episode. So we want to thank you guys, you know, so much for listening to us. We're doing this out of passion. You know, we always release these for free, and we will never release a podcast for a paid service. Uh, but you can help us out. Share us with your friends. Get us more listeners. Leave us a review on iTunes. We would love to hear back from you guys. Send us messages on our Twitter at cog, cog underscore stop or on Facebook at facebook.com slash cogstopproductions. Uh, anything that you want to plug, Scott? Uh, there's one more thing I just want to throw out there. There is a Kickstarter going on for a D&D uh, documentary movie. Oh, yes. It's called uh, The Great Kingdom where it's these friends of Gygax are getting together and they're released it they're got all this documentation and all these photos and all these things from how D D originated, where Gary Gygax got the idea right, and how what it took to create this game. Because it was made in the seven like it was released in the seventies and it's still around now. They're still going about to release another rendition of the game. And so it's on Kickstarter I implore you, go there, watch the videos. If you like it, donate, try to help them get to their goal. And what was the name of that again? Uh, it, the movie is The Great Kingdom, and they are on Kickstarter. It is... I'm not even going to give you the link because it's all those numbers and letters. Yeah, uh, if you use the search function and you yeah. search The Great Kingdom, you should be able to find it. Yeah, D&D documentary or The Great Kingdom, you should be able to find it. Um just check it out. It's amazing. I can't wait for this to come out. Yeah, and they look really great. They have a lot of uh, great pledge rewards. So some of them are as goofy as a Mary Jo's secret potato salad recipe. <laughs> uh, and it, that was actually, uh, it's the Gygax secret German potato salad recipe. Yeah. So there's some great little ones like that. There's some... Uh, other ones where you can be a co-executive producer of the movie for a very large amount, but it's always worth it if you want that writing or that credit. Yeah. 
because you'll be credited in in the movie in every uh, unit that is sold. Your name will be on the credits. Yep. What about you, Josh? Anything to plug? I know they can check you out at Twitter at uh, at Man Must Evolve. Yes. Uh, not that I ever actually t- tweet anything. But if you tweet at him, he might tweet back. No, I'll definitely. That that'll give me something to do with Twitter. Please give me something to do with Twitter. Yes, harass him. Make Please him. harass him. Like and they then could. You can catch Scott at New Bill Scott on Twitter. Yep. And you can catch me. I run the Cogstop Productions Twitter, and so I'm the one at, at Cogstop. But when we do it from at Cogstop, we do it from all of us. So if you write to Scott or to Josh or to anyone else on the Cogstop team, you will you can contact them through there. And that's the end of our episode. So, take it easy. For more episodes, updates, and other projects, check us out at cogstopproductions.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook at Cogstop Productions, and follow us on Twitter at cog underscore stop. <laughs>